light and I'm hot. But my investigation is with a man who couldn't just cool down by taking off a layer because the air around him was very, very cold. This is a climbing wall where climbers train. Now, where's Alan Hinks? Hi, Femi. I'll be down in a tick. Alan Hinks has just come back from climbing Nanga Parbat in Pakistan, over 8,000 metres high. So what do you do when you're up a mountain and you get hot? When you get hot, heat flows from your body to cooler areas. OK, so it goes into your clothes and then into the air around you. Yes, but I want to control the flow to prevent that. Well, I knew if I could store the heat produced when I was climbing, then I could use it to warm myself up once I stop climbing and cool down. But how could you do that? I'll give you a clue. Try climbing in your fleece. You want me to climb? <sighs> Phew, made it. Now to look at my fleece under a special camera that's sensitive to heat. You can see it on my face. It's different colours depending on how warm various bits of my face are. My eyes are hottest, my nose is cooler, and my green hair coolest of all. It's the same on your body. My fleece shows hot spots under my arms and up my back. If we could get heat to flow to the cooler areas, couldn't we store more? That's right, and I've got a special fleece here, just like the one I took to Nanga Parbat with me. So, give this a try. Thanks, Alan. It's the investigation's driving me up the wall. Alan's climbing in an ordinary fleece so we can compare them. Right, let's see how the special fleece has got on. There is heat stored in more of the special fleece. Compare it to Alan's ordinary one. The special fabric allows the heat to flow more easily. This is how it would have spread as I got hot. And it stores the heat for longer. You can see it with my handprints. The ordinary fleece loses heat faster. The special fleece is better at spreading it and storing it. 